Hello everyone and welcome to Generative Face Models from LightSage Scans. My name is Kalle and together with Yaje, who will be taking over in the second half of this presentation, I will present the pipeline of ICT's Vision and Graphics Lab that automates the generation of human face data and enables further research in most areas of human face models. Virtual avatars, or digital visual representations of humans, are at the center of many recent advances in computer graphics and vision. And when dealing with empirical data and leaning less on manual design, it becomes apparent that this field has many use cases outside of simply rendering pretty images. But no matter the use case, we should strive toward a common data model to increase versatility. That's why we're making our morphable face model open for use in research, and that's something we'll come to later in this talk. The outline will be as follows. I will give you an overview of the topic and go through the automatic facial scanning pipeline, as well as give some use cases for a facial scanning database. And later, Yaje will talk about the most recent advances in our research in deep learning based method for generative face modeling. ICT's Vision and Graphics Lab is run by a group of researchers, both students and engineers. We're focusing on modeling and digital recreation of objects, people, and environments. We build both concrete visual models and abstract generative models that can understand and produce visual data. Human data, and specifically facial scans for recreation of virtual avatars, are a big part of our research, and that is why we are focusing on that in this presentation. Since this is GTC, I want to highlight how uh, crucial NVIDIA support is uh, in this basic machine learning research. Hardware and support for rendering, as well as exchange of ideas and data, have been very useful in this project. More on this later. The first successful virtual graphic representations of human-like characters had to be manually designed and at the time rendering and animation techniques were quite limited. Face scanning made ground truth data more readily available, which also greatly increased the realism together with advances in both offline and real-time rendering. And the last couple of years have shown incredible boosts in performance and quality of real-time rendering with many more versatile use cases of digital avatars. The advent of deep learning has increased automation in uh, many aspects of face modeling. So why are we doing this? Well, virtual telecommunication is often posed as one of the main use cases of high fidelity virtual avatars. But basic research and a push toward automation and availability of both data and software helps the computer graphics community to uh, develop a better uh, hardware and algorithms so that art and storytelling through the digital medium can get a wider spread. And due to the uncanny valley problem, human faces are by many considered the final frontier of computer graphics. With an even wider lens, we can start to see also that the raw data we capture can be used in uh, medical applications such as forensics and cephalometry or scientific visualization. So the question becomes if we can build a versatile and automatic face model through the use of high resolution data capture. The key points are versatility and automation. If the database and face model are not versatile, they will not be usable in a wide variety of applications. And the sheer amount of data needed for learning definitely calls for automation. We're facing multiple technical challenges when building face models for avatar creation. Building three-dimensional models from scanning, registering and rigging these scans and recreating physically based material intrinsics, as well as driving the final model through animation, are challenging components that we're facing when conducting our data pipeline. And when building databases, we have to consider multiple data formats, compression, anonymization and scaling for future use cases. Using the light stage technology for facial scanning has been state of the art in the movie industry for over a decade and over the years our lab has worked on inventing algorithms to extract very high resolution physical intrinsics from scan scanned objects as well as multiple other techniques for capturing and relighting the human face. Polarization difference imaging and spherical gradient illumination being 
some of the most relevant innovations. So here's a quick description of polarization difference imaging. So imagine you have a light source and a dielectric material object surface and a camera which you put linear polarizers in front of. If you have another polarizer turn 90 degrees and shine the light through that, the light will get filtered through the polarizer and reflected both specularly and diffusely. The specularly reflected light will be completely blocked from the polarizer because it retains its polarization state, whereas the diffusely uh, reflected light will get a new mixed polarization state and is able to pass through the polarizer on the other side. And this is what we call cross-polarized light. If we then turn the polarizer 90 degrees, all the specularly reflected light will be able to pass through as well, and the uh, diffusely reflected light will stay the same. And this is what we call parallel polarized light. Taking these two images, one from cross-polarized light and one from parallel polarized light, we can separate diffuse from specular reflection by subtracting the uh, parallel polarized light from the cross. And this makes us able to extract diffuse albedo, specular intensity, and from uh, gradients, that is, by illuminating the subject from multiple directions, we can extract both surface normals and subsurface normals. To scale light stage capture and processing for massive database capture, we had to make some upgrades in both hardware and software. We make use of 25 Semia machine vision cameras, an open source capture software from EA called AVA Capture, multispectral color reconstruction and framing using a hydraulic chair. And this all resulting in a smoother and faster process for capture and data streaming. The automatic scanning pipeline starts with a set of multiple static scan expressions known as fax shapes for facial action coding system. We produce a stereo base mesh geometry using regular photogrammetry along with camera calibration and landmark detection of 68 feature points known as the multi-PIE markup. Those are located using a machine learning model called a convolutional post machine and then triangulated to 3D from multiple camera views. Our face model database or 3D morphable face model will be used in the next steps to register and to rig the scan face. So I'm going to describe what a linear morphable face model is. To make sense of the raw scan data, we need a model that can closely represent any person who gets scanned. A morphable face model consists of a set of pre-registered face scans in a common topology. Each scan is represented as a shape vector where vertex coordinates are all aligned column-wise. One scan is now a data point in a 3 times n dimensional vector space where n is the number of vertices. By using the average of all the shape vectors and adding together weighted offsets from the feature points by tuning the alpha parameters, any new face that is a linear combination of the faces in the database can be generated. By using principal component analysis, we can reduce the dimensionality of the source data and ensure that all shape vectors are orthogonal. In PCA, we take all the sample points which will lead to a certain distribution of the whole data set and compute the mean of all the data points. PCA will result in principal component vectors which correspond to the features of most variants in the original data set. And by limiting the number of principal components used to represent the variants in the source data, we can build a new basis with lower dimensionality than the source data itself. This makes it possible to take the mean shape and apply the offsets along the principal component vectors to morph the shapes where variance is highest. So registering a new face consists of fitting the alpha parameters or finding the feature vector that best approximates the new face. Using non-rigid iterative closest point condition on both geometry and landmarks the model can be morphed and the alpha parameters found. When building a linear face model, we wanted to avoid having to manually sculpt and fit all the face scans to get started. 
So we made use of a publicly available face model called the basal face model and transferred all the shapes to our topology. But for a subset of scanned face identities, we had manually placed eyeballs and teeth and cleaned up the geometries. This introduces more variance in the data set where never before seen faces can get represented by the model. And through this, we have iteratively updated the PCA basis with new scans to improve the model. The model consists of multiple geometries that can combine to a final representation of the head. In addition to PCA-based morph targets for identities, the model can deform with a number of generic linear expression blend shapes. These are used when fitting scanned expressions. In addition to the linear fitting, we use dense optical flow constraints to more accurately fit the surface deformations. Now that we have looked at identity and expression registration, the next step is to build an animatable face rig. By taking the before mentioned generic expression shapes and applying them to a scanned identity neutral, a well-defined rig of joints and controls can be created for the use in animation and tracking. When we have the model and it's rigged with expression shapes, next thing to do to be able to render this properly is texture mapping. In addition to the earlier work of the polarized spherical gradient illumination technique using photometric stereo to capture accurate mesoscopic geometry, we apply a new technique to promote color images using only monochrome cameras by illuminating the subject with multispectral LED lights. The advantage of using this is that monochrome cameras lack the Bayer filters required to achieve color images in regular cameras. Without the Bayer filter, we get more pixels available for high-res geometry based on very sharp specular reflections. This technique requires the use of polarization filtering because for a dielectric, i.e. non-metallic material, only the diffusely reflected light is affected by the color of the incoming light. All specular reflections are wavelength independent. Therefore, after polarization difference, the colorization is applied to the image with only diffuse reflections. Image data from eight cameras get projected onto the geometry to generate the texture maps in UE space. With the final result being a set of 2D mappings of physically based intrinsics. We have KS, which stands for specular intensity, the fraction of radiosity that keeps polarization after a single reflection and doesn't enter the surface. Single scatter, or KSS, is the fraction of radiosity that keeps polarization after a single diffuse scattering. Diffuse albedo, or KD, is a wavelength dependent fraction of diffusely reflected radiosity that does not get absorbed. D corresponds to the displacement from the low resolution base mesh along the direction of the normal to the surface of the face. This is converted to a normal map for real time rendering. So the texturing of the model is done. That gives us a final reliable face model when all assets are combined. And now all the data can be imported into a multitude of rendering softwares. To demonstrate the rendering work in Unreal Engine, two NVIDIA employers were kind enough to let us scan them and integrate both their static scan data and facial performance capture in this presentation. And the notes, they both actually have hair in real life. Only one of the subjects were lucky enough to get a groom model for this demonstration. We also performed any required mesh cleanup, such as careful eyeball placement. For the rendering of the eyes, we use a dataset called the Realistic Human Eye with a library of multiple assets. In Unreal Engine, we use existing eye materials from the Digital Human project. In Unreal Engine, we could also match the lighting condition to the flash photographies taken during the scan. To generate customized expression blend shapes for these models, we aligned the raw scans and then ran the fitting pipeline to recreate the fax expressions. By isolating certain facial areas such as the left or right side, upper or lower part, we can generate a wider variety of plausible virtual expressions. By then computing PCA on these 150 or so shapes, we can get a new set of shapes that are orthogonal and have a lower dimensionality. 
It's the same principle as when computing PCA on identity models, but here it's done with expressions. If we then compute a linear solve of these principal components, so that they combine and produce the best approximations of each pre-existing template blend shape, we can produce a set of personalized expression shapes. The resulting shapes will be limited to linear combinations of any movement the given scan subject's face can produce, which makes them unique to his or her face model. Later on, Yaje will go into another method of generating personalized expression shapes from a single scan. We reached out to DI4D who were willing to help out in capturing and processing a short performance sequence for us to work with. Be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. We then took the generated expression model and solved for the blend shape expression weights to match the dense sequence we got from DI4D, with the face tracking resulting in this animation sequence. Be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. Be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. And with our female subjects, we're getting these results. Pete's job was to keep the baby happy. Today, Dick told Patty about it. The girls were baking the biggest cake for Mr. Tag. She usually rushes to push the garage door closed. George is at the church watching a magic show. Why haven't you looked anywhere behind the house or beyond the hill yet? He then led the young man into the study. And either by chance or maneuver, the door was partially closed after Andrea. I have told you, where the air is pure, where every sound soothes, where one is sure to be humbled, however proud may be his nature, I love that humiliation, I who am master of the universe, as was Augustus. With more advanced rig logic, with features such as rotational joints with shape correctives, we would be able to reproduce more subtle facial movements as well as neck rotation. We would also be able to produce more realistic lip animation if lips were allowed to stick together as they are pulled apart. And tongue animation would provide a great deal of realism to some specific phonemes. These are all points that we are working on to increase realism in animation. To more accurately represent tiny deformations of the skin surface that are due to stretch and compression as the face surface moves around with expressions, we can pre-compute dynamic texture maps that can be used when rendering the skin. This is done by computing a scalar deformation of each polygon in the 3D mesh. Here these deformation values are visualized as red for compression and green for stretching. The stretch and compression values get mapped to 2D for each expression. And since each expression has corresponding texture maps, we can sample the textures with maximum values in either compression or stretching respectively. And this way we can generate textures of both high compression and high stretch in the skin structure. Albedo, specularity and normals all get their own pair of stretch and compression maps. By computing the deformations of the blend shape expressions the same way, we can generate influence maps that define how each blend shape corresponds to the overall stretching and compression of the skin. The final influence then determines how much of the neutral, the stretch and the compression texture should be sampled to generate the final combined texture. To reduce the number of texture slots in the shader, the influence maps get combined into a texture atlas which can be sampled in multiple occasions. When animating, the blend shape values get updated, which in turn causes stretch and compression that we can visualize with colors. Are those shy Eurasian footwear, cowboy chaps, or jolly earth-moving headgear? With tenure, Susie'd have all the more leisure for yachting, but her publications are no good. Here we show an example of the final texture blending that produces mesoscopic skin deformations. We have talked about how the scanning pipeline is used to produce animatable and relightable face models. 
But to actually start learning the correlations of the features in each data point, we need a big number of face scans. With enough data, it's possible to learn complex features that promote the ability to generate new faces or to map a low resolution scan to a higher resolution one. One goal with this is to have a common data format for representing human faces and ultimately the full body that can be used in many fields. This for sure requires anonymization of data points and the ability to retain the fidelity of the data set without exposing any individual data points in the source data. We have already seen an example of this. PCA, or Principal Component Analysis, is the gold standard for 3D morphable face models and has been for over 20 years. There are good reasons for that. After PCA is computed on a dataset, there's no way of reversing it to find out what the original data points were unless the morph weights of the source data are kept. Face deformations are well approximated linearly, and it's a simple and accessible mathematical tool. An infinite number of linear combinations of the principal components can be generated by random sampling from a known distribution. Here are some shape vectors regenerated by random sampling from a linear model. These are not scans of people, but the overall statistical properties of each contributor to the dataset are embedded in these reconstructed models. We are in the middle of releasing a sample version of the morphable face model to the research community and would love to get feedback and find collaborators in building a versatile model that can scale for future use cases. We'll be working on updating this GitHub page in the near future. Finally, to demonstrate how the face model can be morphed into new faces, we tune the alpha parameters of the shape vectors. The animation of the face is tracked using a pre-recorded sequence. In addition to the shape vectors, we compute PCA on albedo textures as well. Note that none of these morph targets or textures were manually tuned. Everything comes from the dataset. And with that, I will hand over to Yaje who will dive deeper into some of the new ideas for representing face data and automating model building. So far, the creation of a production-level avatar is conquered by the high-end movie and gaming industries. We started to explore the possibility of making the avatar creation automatic and lightweighted as well as the high-quality data accessible to the whole community, especially to the research community, where analysis by synthesis is right about the time. As mentioned by Kala, our first try is the linear 3D morphop model, which is built based on our delicate database. The 3D morphop model satisfies the needs of easy access and lightweight. However, it also has the following limitations which leave great room to improve. The first limitation is the geometry resolution. Traditionally, the 3D morphology model either is linear or nonlinear, as they are in the 3D mesh format. The geometry resolution is pretty limited as shown in the most widely used models, such as Flim, Face Warehouse, and Basel model on the left side. The vertices number are pretty sparse compared to the real scans on the right side, which indicates that the high frequency details cannot be modeled in such parametric models. Current 3D morphology model has merely geometry, except for a few like Basel model. However, their geometry and texture are modeled separately without considering the joint distribution. On the right side, ground truth combination of geometry and texture are shown in green circles, while the randomly combination are shown in red circles. Although there is a very small group, biracial, 
who combine the genes of multiple racial groups. We still don't expect such texture and geometry combinations generated by the 3D morphology model. The generated model should be lying in the natural distribution of majority population in each racial group. Although the current 3D morphology model can generate novel human identities with different variants in each control component, the semantic of each component is hard to define. As the models are pure mathematical tensor dimension reduction, like in PCA models, each axis is in lack of semantic deformation. So, we cannot control the attributes of generated identities, which makes the morphology model less practical when applied to the game industry or research community when avatar property needs to be controlled. A large gap between the current 3D morphology model used in the research community and industry is the rendering quality. Physically based face attributes are required and modeled in the standard industry pipeline and the rendering engine. However, none of the existing 3D morphology model ever consider or provide such assets. Based on the above observations and inspired by the recent achievement in the success of deep generative models, we come up with a solution of a deep 3D morphology model to solve all the above issues with novel data representation and network design. Our goal is to build a generative face model that can overcome all the limitations in the traditional 3D morphology model. Our generated model should have high resolution geometry, all the physical measurements of real skin, which can be directly fit with the industry rendering pipeline. Our created model should also in line with the law of natural distribution, and it has the power of controlling semantic attributes. We are exploring a novel generative face modeling approach. To achieve our goals, firstly, we come up with a novel geometry representation. We ended with 2D representation for geometry. Here, each point on the surface is parametrized to a 2D location and coded in their pixels are 3D positions. This 2D UV representation has the following benefits. First, it allows correspondence between geometry and texture, which further makes the drone distribution of them possible. Second, as each pixel stands for a single point in 3D, a 2K by 2K geometry map can store up to 4 million vertices which satisfy most of the high-quality scanning data storage. Third, the area of convolutional neural network is well developed. The geometry in 2D enables us to stand on the shoulder of most advanced CNN technologies. As demonstrated by Kala, our database includes both high-resolution geometry and physical measurements of skin reflectance properties. However, to bootstrap our database with a large diversity of identities. We also introduce high-resolution triple ganger data. In total, we have around 4,000 scans in our training data. Among them, 79 individuals are from our life stage with 26 expression and one neutral for each of them. Triple gangers include 99 well-distributed individuals with 19 different expressions and one neutral. We transfer all the triple gangers mesh into our topology using the technique of linear morphological model fitting and Laplacian non-rigid deformation. We also show the distribution of age and ethnicity of the two databases. It shows that triple gangers well complements our data distributions. Our system is a casting network that includes four sub-networks identity network, expression network, specular displacement map inference network, and up resolution network. The identity network first generates a neutral identity with orbital by providing the vector in latent space, followed by an expression offset map generated by the expression network. By simply adding the offset map to the generated geometry map, we will get the same person with a different expression. Then we concatenate albedo and geometry map 
as input to fit into an image-to-image -image translation network, which will generate specular and displacement maps. Finally, all the maps are sent to a super-resolution network, which will be upscaled to 4K, the original resolution of last-stage data. We ended with the hero rendered in Maya Arnold. This work has been accepted by CVPR 2020. For more details, please check our paper, which we will put online soon. We show our generated models rendered in different rendering software. Firstly, please see our model in Unreal Engine. In Maya Arnold, we show that the photorealism increases as we gradually add more assets. We also relight the heroes with different environment lighting conditions. Our model automatically generates infinity identities with a full set of physically based skin assets in light stage quality, which makes such data accessible to the whole community. Here we demonstrate the nonlinear interpolation between our generated subjects. In the first row, we interpolate H in latent vector space from left to right. In the second row, we interpolate the gender between two models. Note that the skin tone is also changing gradually. We illustrate our latent space geometry interpolation in this video. As long as smooth transition in vector space, the geometry will also be smoothly transformed from one to another. The next is our interpolation with geometry and albedo. Showing our model can learn the joint distribution of them. The changes in geometry is associated with the changes in albedo to ensure the gener generated model lying in a reasonable statistical distribution. Here are the results of specular map inference of our network. The visual quality of our infrared specular is comparable to the ground truth. Specular is the reflectance property of the human face, which can only be obtained by specialized devices. However, our results demonstrate that if we input a proper albedo, the specular can be accurately inferred. Our generated model can be directly used for gaming and other industry pipelines. It can also be used for multiple applications, such as data enhancement. Low-quality data can be easily captured using portable devices. Although the resolution is relatively low, they can provide large diversities in identities and facial attributes, like face shapes, skin tones. Our model can greatly enhance the quality and resolution of such data, so that it can be useful to many applications which requires decent 3D models. A fundamental problem in computer vision is mesh registration or mesh retopology, which is to unify the topology for all the different mesh sources and find the vertex-to-vertex -vertex correspondence. It usually requires a complicated procedure. Our model provides a one-shot solution for mesh registration. Error map indicates that our approach greatly outperforms other morphob models in this task. Plan shapes are widely used in the animation industry and provide the fundamentals for advanced modeling like muscles, joints, and bones. Personalized plan shapes show a specific way of a specific subject perform unit expression, which is usually manually created by artists based on the reference of real scans. A set of golden standard plan shapes are usually defined by an experienced artist, giving a set of generic plan shapes and a neutral subject. We can easily transfer the expression offset of the generic plan shapes to the subject to obtain the same unit expression. Compared to the template plan shapes, personalized 
blank shape created by artists actually capture the person's unique facial motion. Similarly, dynamic texture, as mentioned above, will provide more details in the final rendering, which is also a critical component of personalized blank shapes. The current pipeline of creating a set of personalized blank shapes is as follows. Firstly, it requires multiple rigorously designed and captured facts. Secondly, we have seen how personalized blank shape and dynamic texture can be generated from a full set of facts expression previously. This method requires manual toning to ensure proper isolation of shapes and alignment of textures. Our goal is to automatically generate a whole set of blank shapes from a single neutral expression face. Our personalized blank shapes should also include dynamic textures. The input consists of a neutral expression scan, which will be registered to our topology firstly, and the corresponding arbido. Output is a set of blank shapes with 55 unit expression. Each of them includes geometry, arbido, specular, and dis displacement map. We selected a subset of our generated blank shapes and rendered with Maya Arnold. Our system has three steps. Firstly, we generate blank shape geometry from neutral geometry using unsupervised learning. Then, the generated blank shape together with neutral orbital will further be the input of texture generation network to infer corresponding maps. In the meanwhile, eyes, teeth, and other parts will be modeled by linear PCA. We finally get a whole set of personalized blank shapes of the input subject. In the personalized blank shape generation component, a big challenge for us is that there is no ground truth. As mentioned before, the generation of personalized blank shape requires a large amount of time, so we actually cannot afford the ground truth as training data. However, we do have multiple expression scans. We design our network to imitate the procedure of artists isolating the scan expression to unit blank shape components. We come up with a two-stage solution. In the first stage, the training stage, we jointly train a blank shape generation network and a blending weights predictor network, which will constrain the blank shape generation by adding reconstruction loss of the expression scans. A GAN structure is used to ensure the generated blank shape to keep semantic. This unsupervised network learns from the scans to isolate the expression with discriminator to keep semantics. In the second stage, the inference stage, only the blank shape generator is being used to infer from a neutral scan. To obtain the dynamic texture of each blank shape, we first use neutral texture, neutral geometry and query blank shape offset as input to predict the corresponding arbido, followed by the same inference network we used previously to predict the specular displacement maps. Then we extract compression and stretch texture from the above generated blank shape textures. Here we take the compression map as an example. Stretch map is generated in the same way. We first compute the deformation mask of each blank shape and fill each pixel of the compression maps with the blank shape texture, which has a maximum value of deformation masks. However, this method will lead to strong boundary artifacts, which we further replace the mask with a soft max function to soften the boundary and still keep the sharpness. The left column shows the most red blank shape directly obtained from the generic. Red column are the reference facts captured with performing most red. Our method keeps the expression semantic from the template and optimizes the shape to match the real scan. We select blank shapes generated by our pipeline with inputs from different resources. 
Note that all the subjects are not in the training data. They are novel subjects to the network. These two subjects are in the test site of light stage data. When compared with the same expression from column 3 to 6, we could clearly see the difference when different individuals performing the same expressions. We also test our pipeline on the purchase data from 3D scan store, which is totally a different data domain. This indicates the robustness of our network. Two more blind shapes from Triple Ganger testing site. Finally, we animate our generated blind shapes with pre recorded performance capture sequences. This actor is asked to perform several expressions, followed by a natural talking. Unfortunately, we currently don't have eye tracking and rigid head motion. Another animation sequences using our automatically generated blind shapes. We are at the beginning of exploring, automating high-quality avatar creation. A lot of work and directions are ahead of us. Our future work includes add more semantic control, such as body weight, skin tone, for the generative face model. Add masks to blend shape generation network for better blend shapes isolation. As our current generative blend shapes are not well isolated, we want to apply mask to disable the optimization of irrelevant face regions when training a specific blend shapes. Deep learning based pixel level face correspondence. We want to explore the possibility of dense and robust face tracking, which provides pixel level correspondence. It will benefit a lot of fundamental face problems including registration, reconstruction, and tracking. Neural face rendering. We want to explore a new way of rendering high-quality face using deep neural networks. We want to give special thanks to the following individuals for their support and help. Thank you.